بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته um, I'm sure you've probably found out by now that unfortunately IANT had take had to take the decision to reclose um, a very tough and difficult decision to close the facility after having been open for a few weeks and um, to better help us understand this point and uh, to understand the reasoning behind it, I am here with Dr. Rani Siddiqui, who is also on our board and is part of the Muslim Medical Professional Association that we have here within the area. And we hope that inshallah ta'ala together we can uh, better address why as well as to help comfort you and understand Islamically where you go from here, inshallah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Um, I am uh, joining Imam Shpandim at our IANT Masjid to talk about uh, what we just uh, mentioned about closing down the Masjid uh, starting from today at Jum'ah for the next two weeks. And the reason, as uh, many of you are becoming aware, is because we had a brother in the congregation who uh, was here on June 11th and tested positive subsequently two days later on June 13th is the information that we are finding out. He was here at the Isha prayer on June 11th. And so basically I would like to explain um, why that is of consequence and why the steps were taken um, as such to close the masjid. So because that brother was here um, last week and tested positive just two days later, scientifically and medically we understand that he was potentially infected prior to the test and potentially while he was here in congregation in the masjid during prayer. And as a result, again potentially he may have um, spread virus to other folks here in, uh, in the prayer with him during that time. And because this information came to us very late last night, uh, an entire week has passed by without really knowing what may have spread uh, from other folks that may have acquired any virus during that week. And so out of precaution, the, the best choice to make for the safety of everybody at large is to close the masjid to eliminate any further possible spread and infection of this coronavirus. Um, so I would like to also impress upon everybody that if you know that you may have been in the masjid on that day, June 11th, particularly at Isha, and as this unfolds, we will also get more information and update you as, we, as the need arises. Um, but that if you were in that congregation at that time to do a few steps. Um, number one, watch your symptoms and, and you know, check in on yourself about how you're feeling over these next two weeks. The recommendation is to self-isolate at home for 14 days from your known exposure. And so to the best of your abilities, we ask that um, if you are able to work from home or eliminate, you know, going to the grocery store or any extra activities or potentially rescheduling any appointments or to the best of your um, ability, if you can isolate and the recommendation goes on to say that this is from work and from school, et cetera. And in our case, we are asking from the masjid yeah, um, to isolate from the masjid, which is why we are, we are closed. Um, if you are able to practice those steps, that is in the best interest of the community uh, in general. And um, also I would extend that to you and your family members. Um, if, if to the best of your ability, if you're able to isolate over these next two weeks, um, that, is, that is recommended. Um, and so, if, if anybody during this time does get any symptoms that are classic symptoms of COVID, to name a few are um, cough, 
sore throat, um, just the classic shortness of breath, things that you are already probably bombarded with in your literature and in, your, um, in, in the news and, and things that in the media that you have already come across. If you have any, if you experience any of those symptoms, uh, lack of smell, lack of taste, um, even diarrhea, if you experience any of that, to consult your doctor, let them know that you might have had a known positive exposure and, and get tested to, to be on the safe side. If during that 14 days you have no symptoms and you're completely well, inshallah, and I pray that you all remain well, that we all remain well, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from this virus and from its illness, um, then you, know, you just need to wait out your 14 days before you can resume back to the regular current distancing measures that we are all implementing. Um, and and one thing that we want to impress upon everybody is perhaps one of the reasons that we did fall in this situation is um, if there are folks that are experiencing any doubt or any symptoms or any um, possible exposures or you know, any small possibility that they may have come into contact with or be, be experiencing some type of illness, to exercise good judgment and, um, and responsibility in congregating in a place with multiple people or in public places. Um, and so we, we wanted to imp you know, convey that message to that we all in general need to act you know, for each other's sake, for each other's benefit, responsibly um, how we proceed. And so again, um, if we can have an explanation from Imam Shbandim, even from uh, a religious standpoint, why that is so important, inshallah, it'll make us all better understand. So just as a reminder, Ya Ahbab, brothers and sisters, uh, with regards to the religious aspect of why, it's the same for when we initially closed the masjid. And it's because Islamically, the preservation of life and the wellness of community as a whole is something of tremendous importance and it actually takes precedent over what we have flexibility with with regards to worship. So we know that as Muslims one of the things that makes us unique is that as the Prophet said wa that the whole of the earth has been made for him a purification as well as a place to pray. So our prayers are not being impacted in the sense that we still make our daily prayers. Yes, the Juma has been affected, but we have the Islamic alternative for praying uh, Salat al-Zuhur in this case. But all of this is being done to show concern and value for life itself. Um, I know that some may feel, and this is a challenge that I've noticed even with my friends within the multi-faith community of clergy, that younger folk may feel that, well, it doesn't affect me, it affects the elderly, or it affects only the immunocompromised, therefore we can go hang out and do things. One of the things that we want to pay attention to is, especially if and when you're living with extended family, where you have elderly parents or grandparents, uh, relatives and things of that sort, you don't want to just be thinking about yourself. So and we I hope and pray that, as individuals, we'll learn from this too. And that is to understand that the sacrifice, my personal sacrifice, has to be there on behalf of the community. As Dr. Rani had mentioned a little earlier, that we want to be a bit more mindful of ourselves and see, am I feeling symptoms, right? Um, of, of course, we're not saying that this particular person, that they didn't, uh, that they weren't vigilant, that they didn't take care of themselves or anything of that sort. We're not saying that at all. But what we're saying is that as individuals, we really want to pay attention to ourselves. Am I feeling anything of the different symptoms of what are, are mentioned as symptoms for this COVID such that if I am, I shouldn't go to the masjid. I don't want to jeopardize the, the, what has happened like in our case and we, we see as other masajid have done that they've closed up again. We don't want to have that happen because I want to go ahead maybe and take the chance and feel like nobody's going to know uh, or, or otherwise. The other point that I'll say is this. Uh, I know that several folks have said, do we, can we find out and know who the person is? That's not something that we can do. If a person wants to, of their own accord, in the way that we've seen leaders of, of the world, different presidents and otherwise, uh, come forward and say, hey, you know, they tested positive, and so this way anybody who has been in some form of physical contact or nearness, that they can be precautious and do what's needed, 
we'll leave that to the person themselves to disclose what they are um, you know who they are otherwise what I've been told is that legally we can't really do that whether it's HIPAA or otherwise um, we want to we want to conclude and say that inshallah we hope that in the future along with Dr. Rani and the medical panel that she has with her that we will keep you updated and the board as a whole inshallah ta'ala will keep you updated of anything else of what happens otherwise Ya Allah, Ya Rahman Rahimeen, Ya Samir, Ya Mujib, Ya Allah, we ask Ya Rabbil Alameen that you heal this brother and his family and others in our community that we are aware of who have tested positive. Ya Allah, we ask you that you heal them and that you help them to overcome what there is from this disease, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Ya Allah, we ask you for them and for everyone else that is out there that is has tested positive. Ya Allah, we ask you that you bless them with health and wellness. Ya Allah, we ask you for this pandemic that has uh, been the longest lasting thing that has come to us uh, with regards to these diseases, subhanAllah. Ya Allah, we ask you that you remove it. Ya Allah, that you do away with it. Ya Allah, that you heal the world as a whole from this and whatever other types of pandemics and epidemics are lurking out there. Ya Allah, we ask you that you help us, that you forgive us. Ya Allah, that you keep our hearts united as we are continuing to navigate through these difficult times. Ya Allah, we ask you, Rabbil Alameen, that you bless us and help us. Only through you and with you can we have guidance and success. Allahumma ameen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala Muhammad.